fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at the Millennium Falcon from the Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron from Jazzwares. I got this from Amazon. As you can see the box is a little worse for wear but should be okay. Uh, we do have four figures down here. Han Solo, Princess Leia, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Chewbacca. As well as the cannon and radar dish. And you can see that it does say it has lights and sounds. It does require three AAA batteries, which are not included, so you do have to provide those on your own. But I'm pretty excited for this one. I think it looks pretty great. Obviously, Millennium Falcon is one of the most iconic ships from all of Star Wars, so it makes perfect sense for it to be in the first wave of this line. If we take a look over here, you can see we have some of the artwork that kind of wraps around to the front. Giant space battle here with the Falcon. And then we have on this side just kind of some more of the plastic and showing off some of the features. And then over here on the back, again, we have buttons for lights and sounds. We have the thrusters in the back that light up, as well as the top coming off for all the detail inside, which we'll take a look at. Cockpit does open. Looks like it has some retractable landing gear as well. And then down here we can see some of the other ships in this first wave. So we have a TIE fighter. This is Asaz Ventress's uh, ship, which name escapes me at the moment. We have a scout walker. Obi-Wan ship, X-Wing, uh, Vader's TIE Fighter, we have a uh, troop transport, and then the larger scale we have uh, Boba Fett ship and the Razor Crest, so that's pretty cool. Uh, taking a look at the bottom, not really anything going on here, just telling you how to install the batteries. So that's it pretty much for the box, we're going to go ahead and get everything out of there and we'll take a closer look. So before we move on to the Falcon itself, I just wanted to show off this little backdrop that comes in the packaging. It's kind of hard to see it with the ship and the tray in the way, so I wanted to show it off real quick. It's kind of some really neat artwork here of this space battle going on with TIE Fighters and X-Wings. And it would be kind of neat if these ships came with flight stands, because I actually might keep this and then kind of pose the ship you know, with a flight stand to make it look like it's part of the battle. But to just kind of sit it on the floor in front of it doesn't really look as great to me. But it's just kind of neat artwork. It might even be something to maybe kind of cut this part off and then put it like in the back of a bookshelf or something and then pose the rest of the ships in front of it. Just kind of neat artwork and I just wanted to show it off because it's kind of easily missed. Okay, so here's everything you get in the box. I've already gone ahead and attached the radar dish and the cannon. And before we get into the Falcon itself, I wanted to take a look at the four little figures that you get. So first up here we have Chewbacca. I think he looks pretty good. I mean, they've done the texturing for his fur, I think, pretty well. He's got his bandolier. It does look like the paint for his nose is just off-center a tiny bit. You can move the arms up together, and you can also bend him at the waist. But a pretty decent tiny little likeness for Chewbacca. Next up we have Han Solo. Now you might notice mine had kind of a large glob of black paint like right here underneath his chin. I was able to remove most of it so you can kind of see like his collar sticking up. But then there's a little bit of discoloration. Otherwise I think it's pretty nicely detailed and painted. I mean they even have like his belt and his holster. Let me move his arms out of the way here. So, I mean, the belt's pretty nicely detailed and painted all the way around. His boots look pretty good. The face looks pretty decent. So, that's just a QC issue on mine. Hopefully, that's not for everybody. But, yeah, overall, I think he looks pretty good. He's got the same articulation. They really have all the same articulation where the arms can move and then they bend 90 degrees at the waist. Up next, we have Princess Leia. She looks pretty good as well. The hair is nicely done. Her belt has some nice silver paint. And then last but certainly not least, we have Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I think it's pretty cool. He's got the lightsaber molded on there. I kind of wish it was a little bit higher up, but I assume that's it had to have clearance for when you bend him at the waist. So you can see that it fits there. But it would have been nice to have it look like it's more attached to the belt. But I do appreciate that it's still there and that's nicely painted silver. And it's a pretty decent likeness. And the robes and everything are painted pretty nicely. So the four minifigures are pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and put them off to the side so that we can take a look at the Falcon. I think this looks really great. I mean, they did a really nice job on this. There's so much molded detail. It has kind of like a black wash to it to kind of give it that like beat up look. Like it's definitely seen some battles. 
but just really, really nicely detailed. Underneath here, you can see we have the, whoops, this fell out, but that's okay. We'll just put that off to the side for the moment. Uh, let me zoom out a bit here. So you can see we have the landing gear and these just flip out. These two are connected, these two are connected, and then this one's on its own. But even underneath, like the detail doesn't stop on the top. Really, really nicely done. So the piece that fell out is kind of the gunner's chair, and you can see how that's in there. You have the cannon up top, and you can kind of see there's a little window here, so you can see the figure inside. But this can move all the way around like that, and it can also kind of spin around. It's a little tight, but also you can put this in, and how this works, you can see that there's kind of like a little notch here, and that's got a little indent there. So if you put this in and then spin it, that will keep it from coming out. So if you want it to stay in place, you can put it like this and then angle the gun back that way. That way it won't come out. But this spins 360, which is really nice. You just have to line that up so that you can then slide it out. Uh, putting a figure inside is a little difficult, but not impossible. So you're going to bend him at the waist and make sure that the hands are up high enough. And then you can see, and it's a little difficult to see inside here, but there is kind of like a cool little control panel there. So you want to kind of feed it in so that the legs go on either side. And like I said, it can be a little difficult. But there you go. We got him in. Not too bad. So you can kind of see him in there. And then you're just going to drop this back in like so. And then once you spin it around, it won't come out anymore. And then you can kind of just see him inside there. It's a little difficult to see. Let me zoom out and adjust the camera. But you can kind of see him in there, which is pretty cool. So if we want to activate the lights and sounds, these two uh, right here are buttons. So if we hit this button. So basically you just push it in and hold it in for just a second and that kind of wakes it up. Otherwise it goes into a sleep mode. So you can see the thrusters here are lit up. Now it has kind of a gyroscope in it. So depending on how you turn it, it'll make different sounds. So if you bank right or left, if you go up or down, if you flip completely upside down, it makes different sounds, which is kind of cool. If you hold uh, the second button down, you get some uh, laser firing sounds, which is pretty cool. And if you let it sit for 30 seconds, it'll naturally turn off. There's not really an on and off switch on this. You kind of just have to let it go for 30 seconds without moving it or hitting any of the buttons and then it'll just naturally turn off. But you can see really, really nice uh, lights back here for the thrusters. I think that really came out really nice. It looks even better in the dark. I'm not gonna turn the lights off just because it'll affect everything and just look bad. But in any case, it is a really nice uh, light there. So you can see now it's going into sleep mode and we'd have to hit the button again to turn it back on. So we can, of course, open this up. We have a cockpit here. That opens up. It's a little difficult to get it open. There we go. It can actually fit all four of the figures in the front there. I think that's really, really cool. So let's go ahead and see if we can fit. We'll put Obi-Wan in the back here. I'm going to have to set this down for a second so I can get his hands in the correct position. There we go. So we will put him here in the back. There we go. And then we'll put Chewie here in the front. There we go. So that's really cool. I really appreciate it. Usually with toys like this, you can only fit two people in the front. But they made it so you can actually fit all four figures in the cockpit, just like in the movie where it has four seats. So I think that's really cool. I'm going to go ahead and take these guys out because otherwise they'll probably just rattle around as I move this thing. Now it might be a little difficult to get Obi-Wan out of here. Nope. Okay, there we go. Just use our old friend Gravity. So we'll put him off to the side and let me zoom out here. So this does open up. This entire section here lifts up. So we have to kind of grab onto this. And it can be a little difficult. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so that whole section lifts off. And now you can see 
the inside of the ship here. So of course we have the famous gaming table here and you can sit these guys all around on this little couch. There we go. So now they are playing the, I don't, I know that game has a name, but I can't think of it right now. And I apologize for that. Uh, of course we have the spinning, uh, you know, cockpit seat. If you bring this around, you can actually see down in there. Again, it's going to be difficult to see, but that is open and accessible. And then if you spin it around, it closes back up. So that's kind of cool. You have the smuggler compartment. This actually opens up. This little panel moves and then you could you could even like lay a figure down in there if you wanted to. And then close it back up. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, take her out of there. So they did have the smuggler compartment included, which I think is kind of nice. When I first opened it, this piece was rattling around and it took me a second to realize where it went. But that goes right in there. And then I'm assuming this is just kind of like a storage room or maybe a galley or something. I'm not 100% sure. But you can see it's just kind of like another little chamber that they can occupy. Kind of looks like they have a washer and dryer. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we do have the ramp over here. So let me pull the landing gear back out so I can demonstrate how the ramp works. Come on. You flip these out. You probably don't need this last one, but it is nice to have. So the ramp here, we grab and it extends downward to about there, which kind of makes sense because it kind of hits the ground given how tall the landing gear is. But the problem is that they're too tall for the ramp. You can see that they're about there. I wish it was just a little bit taller. I feel like the old Kenner Millennium Falcon was kind of the same way. So I don't really understand. It's got to be some kind of balance with making the landing gear too tall versus how far the ramp can come down. So it's kind of like a delicate balance. But I wish they could get this right <laughs> because it seems like no Millennium Falcon toy can really... I feel like even the Lego ones don't really quite get it right. Um, but yeah, that's the boarding ramp. It does extend down. Now, of course, you can just kind of tilt them and, and put them up that way, and that'll work, but it's just a shame. I wish that it was just a little bit taller. Okay, now she doesn't want to come out of the boarding ramp. There we go. <laughs> so pop that back in. But yeah, it's neat. It does a lot of cool features here. I really like this a lot. You can spin the radar dish. It's a little tight, but you can spin that around. Of course, you can move this all around, and this goes up and down. I really like that you can fit all four figures in the cockpit there. This is where you have to unscrew this little plate right here and put the batteries in. And then you just screw it back down. And then you just take this and... I guess I'll have to do it like that. You can see that there's kind of two tabs here in the front. So they just kind of plug in. And then this goes down over top and clips in just like so. And then you can put that back if you want. Uh, it is nice though because the buttons are still accessible even when this is off. These are just kind of like a secondary button that rests on top of the buttons that are inside. So you can still use it when this piece is on or off, which is really nice. You can even use the like uh, laser firing sound without setting off the thrusters. So you don't have to worry about the gyroscope if you don't want to. As I have done it again by accident. But I think it's a really cool ship. I think they've done a great job with it. I think the four figures look pretty good. I mean, I understand they're not going to be perfect because of how small they are. There's really only so much they can do. But I think for as small as they are, they're pretty well detailed and painted. Uh, in my case, Han was a little bit too much painted. But I was able to clean off a little bit of that glob and it kind of came out all right. But the lights and sound effects are really cool. I like both of them. I like how it has the gyroscope so you can kind of you know, move it around like it's flying through space and get those different sounds depending on how you bank or fly up or down or even do like a complete turn. Um, it's really cool. I think that's really neat. They've done a really nice job with this. Uh, also, just to show uh, scale, because this line's whole thing is making sure that the ships are in scale with each other, here is the Falcon with the uh, Luke X-Wing that I got previously. This should also be pretty widely available now at this point. But I think that's a pretty good scale. I feel like the X-Wing is definitely smaller. And, it, you know, I wouldn't want them to make it too big. But I feel like the scale is pretty, pretty well done here. The line's big draws that they're supposed to be, you know, in scale in universe. So 
But yeah, I think this looks pretty cool. The one thing I will say, we have Luke and R2 over here. I feel like 3PO definitely should have come with this. I understand they already did four figures, and I want all four that they did give us. I wish they would have just given us a fifth one in 3PO, because I feel like what else is he going to come with? I don't really know. There's not really another ship that it makes sense for him to come with, and we do have R2, and of course I want them to go together. Um, that's kind of just one of my only complaints about this thing. I think this thing's a lot of fun. I think it really came out great. I mean, first and foremost, it looks incredible. They've done a great job recreating the Falcon here. There's so much molded in detail to this thing. It's kind of insane. And they've given it this nice black wash, which not only like accentuates all that molded detail, but kind of adds to the rough and tumbled look of the Falcon because it's definitely a ship that's seen a lot of action. So they did a really great job with all that. I love the four figures that we get. I love that all four of them can fit in the cockpit, but you can also put one in the gunner's chair. I do kind of wish that we got 3PO as a fifth figure because I feel like with one here and four here, five would have made sense. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of room for figures on the inside, but I feel like, you know, while you're flying and if you don't want a bunch of figures rattling around inside, you still can put four comfortably in the cockpit and then have one in the gunner chair so that way it would have made sense to include five. And I just really don't know what other ship they would include 3PO with. And I really need a little 3PO to go with my little R2. So hopefully he shows up somewhere down the line. Uh, but yeah, I love this thing. Like I said, you can open it up. You have all kind of the iconic parts of the ship from all the films. The gaming table. You have the smuggler's compartment. You have that little section over here, which is either like uh, armory, storage, a galley. I'm not 100% sure. I guess you can kind of use your imagination a little bit. But I think they did a really nice job with all that. Uh, the lights and sounds, I think, really work well. You have the button here to activate the thrusters. They look fantastic when they're lit up. And then it has that gyroscope when you kind of move it around to get all the different sounds depending on how you bank or flip upside down or, you know, turn up, turn down. It's really, really neat. And then, of course, you have the laser firing sound, which works really well also. Uh, you have the landing gear down here, which I think is perfectly good. Uh, I do wish that the ramp, you know, extended a little bit further down so the figures could be as tall as the ramp, but they would have had to make the landing gear a little bit taller, and I guess that just wouldn't really have worked with the contour of the ship, so I guess some allowances have to be taken, but, um, you know, it is what it is. But I think for the most part, this is definitely a lot of fun. I definitely recommend checking it out. Like I said, I got mine on Amazon. I don't know if they're in stores yet. I think some people are finding them in stores. I think now that Target and Walmart are starting to do their resets, they should be showing up on store shelves soon, so definitely be on the lookout. Um, and I just noticed that this has uh, lights here in the front. Does the... No, I thought maybe those were lights. I thought maybe they lit up with the um, laser firing sounds, but they, they don't. But that's okay. Uh, still, really like this a lot. My only real gripe, the fact that the, the boarding ramp doesn't extend a little bit further, and the fact that we didn't get a 3PO... Other than that, it's it's pretty perfect. It even scales well because this whole line's like big draw is that they're all in scale with each other in universe. So it looks great with the X-Wing, which is the only one I have right now. Um, but I'm going to be getting more of these very soon and I'm definitely going to be keeping these going. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.